Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So lately on Twitter, there's been a really interesting discussion about whether or not game devs should pay for YouTube coverage, YouTube or Twitch, any kind of creative coverage. It's one of those things where there's been quite a bit of backlash, but if you look through it, there's actually quite an interesting discussion going on. Also, before I go any further on this video, let me just point out that Mike himself, he posted out an apology. He realizes now that he completely missed the mark and that he says that he absolutely does value the work that YouTuber and content creators do, and his original words did not reflect that at all. So let's see what this whole discussion is about to learn from it, but please don't go in ahead and harass any developer or indie publisher. The whole thing started off from this post from Mike Rose, talking about the recently released game Spiritia, and talking about how apparently it got zero coverage on YouTube at all. And then the main one was right here, which is basically YouTubers want you to pay them to cover your games, but I just don't want to do that, it feels weird and icky and disingenuous. So this is the thing that caused a lot of backlash and a lot of people got rightfully upset at this comment. It does come across as quite a lot tone deaf, especially how if you go to the top of this post, this whole thread is basically broadcasting just how successful their game is, how it made a million dollars in sales in just one week, it was profitable from day one. So this is a hyper successful game, made tons and tons of money. And Mike, he's the CEO from No More Robots. This is another hyper successful publisher with tons and tons of very successful games. So The Cinders was a big one. Hypnospace Outlaw, that was another big one. Yes Sir Grace, very successful. Let's Build a Zoo, very successful. So tons of very successful indie games. And again, over here talking about just how successful the game is. So yep, that does come across as quite a lot tone deaf. When then it says, okay, we made a ton of money. We made millions of dollars, but we don't want to pay any money to anyone covering our game on YouTube. So because of that, there was quite a lot of backlash. For the most part, people saw it as pretty much as disrespectful to people who cover indie games for a living and do it pretty much for free. That is a really tough business. It's nearly impossible to make money covering indie games, but people do it anyways. They do it mostly for the love of it. So the fact that those people are trying to get paid for the work that they do, a lot of people consider that pretty reasonable. So a game that is hyper successful being unwilling to pay for any coverage at all and just calling it icky, that does feel quite a lot tone deaf. Honestly, on this issue, I think I can see both sides of it. Meaning, I can obviously see that creators are extremely useful. A creator can definitely make or break an indie game. So I think creators, especially nowadays, are extremely valuable for the entire indie game ecosystem. But at the same time, I can also understand this feeling of making it feel icky and disingenuous. I think the split over that comes basically on time. Aaron, who is also a very successful indie developer, made the very successful game Race the Sun and many others. He posts what I think is pretty much exactly the reality, which is how it's interesting how expectations around game coverage have changed in the last decade, and Mike is really coming at it from the old school point of view that paying for coverage is considered scummy. Now for me, I can definitely understand this point. I remember when I started getting into game development and indie games in general about 10 years ago, and back then, paying for coverage did seem quite a bit disingenuous. Back then, during the Total Biscuit days, people covered games just for the love of it, just for the love of indie games. Back then, if a indie game developer sponsored a YouTuber to cover their game, people would consider that to be pretty much selling out. They would consider that to be a very negative thing. I think the issue is, back then, players considered these kinds of videos to be sort of mini-reviews, so it definitely felt a bit strange to pay for a review. It is also the simple thing that 10 years ago, being a content creator, that was not really a job. Nobody considered that a job. Whereas nowadays, it is a very viable career path. Then, of course, over time, especially when the whole adpocalypse thing happened over here on YouTube, when that happened, it became harder and harder to make any sort of money by covering games, especially indie games that don't usually get millions of views. So because of that, content creators had to start taking things more like a proper business, which in turn means obviously getting sponsored to do kinds of things so they can keep making videos. So nowadays, it does seem pretty normal to pay for coverage. If you go on Twitch, anytime a big AAA game comes out, now people do accept that those streams are going to be sponsored. Usually EA or Activision, they always sponsor some streams when one of their new games comes out. And nowadays, players do accept that, they don't consider that solid behavior, they just see, okay, that's just the creator economy, the creative system nowadays. One of the biggest people in this area specifically, so indie games on YouTube, one of the big ones is Splatacat Gaming. Personally, I really like watching this channel, it's one of the main ways that I keep up to date with all of the tons and endless games that are coming out. The amount of indie games is just insane, and all of these are really awesome. So his channel is really important in order to help those indie developers stand out from the tons and tons of games that are coming out. And he posted basically about that original thread, how it's really disheartening to see some of the replies to that original post. Basically, there are some people that got really upset that the original post said YouTubers shouldn't get paid. And in turn, there are some people really upset, those people who don't consider YouTube to be a real job, so they think they shouldn't complain that they don't get paid to play games. 
which completely ignores the fact that being a content creator, being a YouTuber, A, takes a lot of time, and B, is really valuable for these indie games. Hence why the publisher really wants the coverage, but for some reason doesn't want to pay for it. Something that I've thought for a real long time that Steam should really have are pretty much just affiliate links. One huge example is how Splattercat covered Vampire Survivors. Back then, the game had like zero reviews, nobody knew about the game. And right after he made this video, that's when the game really started to blow up. So it is in pretty large part thanks to him that the game ended up making millions and millions of dollars. But personally, he probably only made like 200 bucks. I mean, indie games on YouTube, they get a very low amount from YouTube ads. So 200k views, this might not even be 200 bucks. So personally, I really think that Steam should add some kind of affiliate link, some kind of way for content creators to be directly paid for the effort that they do, and for basically driving eyeballs to the tons of indie games that exist on Steam. I can say that for myself as both a game developer and a YouTuber. I really value all of the YouTubers that ended up playing my game as soon as it was out. I'm really thankful to these people who both played my game, got some eyeballs onto it, and seeing someone play actually really helped me as a developer. Being able to watch someone else play my game directly, that is really helpful for being able to improve things that I didn't even know needed improvement. So I really, really value the videos where people play my game. Then one very important thing that caused this backlash to be much worse is pretty much exactly the title and the screenshot that he chose to say. It simultaneously says we got absolutely zero YouTube coverage at all, whilst at the same time the screenshot does show 40k views, 10k views, 10k views and so on. So once again this really comes across as tone deaf. For most indie game devs, getting someone to play their game and have 40,000 views on that video, that is an insane amount that is really helpful. But when you are a pretty massive indie game publisher, 40k views is nothing. So when he thinks about YouTube coverage, he's thinking in the millions of views. So once again, that also comes across as really tone deaf. You got tons of views, but since they expect a ton more, they completely devalue all of these content creators that are making videos on the game. Aaron goes on to say, I remember when the idea of a sponsored stream just seemed inherently sleazy. And some people even suggest YouTubers should be paying developers to use their content because in a lot of cases the videos made with content were hugely profitable. This is back before the adpocalypse on YouTube where the ad rates for games were much much higher. In his thread there's actually a really interesting comment related to this. Talking about the video in the original image and saying that video in his image with 10k views probably took that creator tons of time to make and they probably made 180 bucks on. Now by itself that sounds pretty bad, a ton of work to make just 180 bucks. But the reality is actually much much worse than that and someone actually correct them on that. 10k views is nowhere close to 180 bucks. I can speak to my own sets, for example my list videos where I talk about the top new games and these videos the ad rate is usually a bit above $2. Meaning 10k views literally means just 30 bucks, definitely not 180 bucks. So the economics for streamers and YouTubers are even worse than it seems at first. All in all I think this post by Wonderbots is really the most accurate take on this whole situation. He's saying in Mike's defense, paying creators for coverage is icky, game coverage is better when it's organic, and while buying video streams won't guarantee that they happen, it also makes them feel less genuine. Which yep, I would say that most viewers would agree with that. If they see something that says sponsored by Yay, they're probably not going to take it as seriously as something that is organic. But like it says here, on the flip side, sponsorships are becoming increasingly necessary. Covering indie games is really not sustainable when it comes to just based on YouTube ad revenue. The only exception are super large channels like Splattercat. And even then, the amount of money that he makes is so tiny compared to how much he could make based on the actual impact that he has on the games. All in all, this whole thing is an interesting discussion, and I think the main takeaway is really just a time difference. Ten years ago, this comment would have been definitely accurate, but nowadays it is definitely no longer accurate. Nowadays, content creators are very much part of the whole indie game ecosystem, and what they do is extremely valuable, and I definitely do believe that they should get paid for that work. The amount of value that they bring can definitely make a game like Vampire Survivors into a mega multi-million hit. So I think it's perfectly reasonable for content creators to ask for some money in order to get some coverage. Although it's also perfectly reasonable if they don't want to take anything in order to satisfy their own personal integrity requirements. And it's also reasonable that some devs don't want or simply can't afford to pay for coverage. Basically in this whole thing, I really just think the only problem, the only reason why this became such a big backlash on Twitter was really just because it came across as really tone deaf. Talking about how successful your game is, how many millions it made, while also saying we really value the work that the YouTubers and Twitch streamers do to cover our games. But whilst we do value them, we don't want to share any of these millions with them. This is certainly a very interesting discussion and something that is definitely ongoing. Let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on this? So should devs pay for coverage? Is it reasonable for a content creator to ask for money in order to cover some kind of game? It's kind of interesting to think about these topics and see how the whole indie game dev industry, this whole thing is still very much in its infancy and everyone is still learning as we go along.